Anyway, let's let's talk a little bit about Pete DeFazio. I'll talk about Pete a bit. Um, Pete's been in the news. Those of you who don't know, Pete is a Democrat in Oregon. Pretty well liked Democrat. I voted for Pete. I even kept the sign of his in my yard for a while, right? Um, probably still vote for Pete, but Pete needs pushing in the direction of climate. He likes to talk a big game, but his record is not quite as big as his talk. All right. So, hey, T.C. Townsend, how are you doing? Veteran Democrats weary of climate push by Ocasio-Cortez and her allies, and one of them happens to be Pete DeFazio, and we're going to explain why. Pete says the idea that in five or ten years we're not going to consume any more fossil fuels is technologically impossible, says Pete, uh, who's in line to lead the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. That's very important. Pete's a ranking member of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, and with the Dems taking House, he will be chair. Right. That's a big committee and transportation industry, a lot of fossil fuels, right? So he says, we can have grand goals, but let's be realistic about how we get there. My first question to Pete is, what's realistic? Please tell me what's realistic to have the transportation industry go green. I'd like to know your thoughts on that, Mr. Bold Climate Guy. So let's, let's continue to look at Pete. On November 20th, Pete said, I have long believed, and understand this is after some battle uh, uh, in, in social media and, and the articles coming out, Ocasio, you know, showing up with the Green New Deal on Pelosi's doorstep. You know, so here's Pete saying, I've, wait a minute, I'm a climate champion, right? He says, I've long believed and emphatically stated that climate change is an existential threat to the planet. We need a bold, dramatic change in policy to address the growing threats. And he goes on and on to tout his record in um, carbon credits. Says I was a, uh, I, I pushed, a, wanted a cap on emissions and a carbon tax. I was original member of the first climate change caucus in the House. So much was accomplished there, right? And just for the record, carbon credits are worthless, right? We all know that they're just a way for these companies to buy each other's bad deeds, right? They're not really gonna help all that much, right? Remember, Pete said that he's all for a bold transition and blah blah blah. Well, the top priority for Pete is transit funds. He wants this big old transportation and infrastructure bill, right? He's going to be chair. He's going to push for this with the Republican, uh, uh, you know, Senate. There's nothing in this that's green. This is all money for roads and bridges, stuff that's been falling apart for years, right? I don't know where Pete stands on the um, Jordan Cove pipeline. You know, it'd be great to hear him come out boldly against it. It's in the party platform. It's a 10-year-old resolution against the Jordan Cove pipeline, but... That, would, that represents, represents a lot of money to Pete's uh, major donors. And we're going to talk about those. In, in this, there's nothing about Pete pushing for a green infrastructure bill. This is all just fossil fuel infrastructure. Airline money. Understand that Pete takes a lot of money from the airline industry. Here's, here's Pete moving his way up from the Natural Resources Committee to a member of the Transportation Infrastructure to being ranking member, and now he's going to be chair. All right, so he's got a lot of friends in that industry. These are the top three donors for Pete, transportation, labor, and construction. Why do I not believe Pete when he says that he is going to push for a bold green you know, cl change in climate, whatever, uh, because of this? The BRIC Act of 2017 was basically a handoff, a handout to the uh, construction industry, people that make bricks, right? And party line were Democrats, no. Republicans, yes. Except Pete, Democrat, voted with the Republicans on this. Why? Because construction is his number two donor base, right? Um, next. Common Sense Nutrition and Disclosure Act of 2017. This benefits a lot of labor industry, agriculture and food, business and consumers, uh, food processing and sales, labor. That's his number three donor base. Party line, Dems, no. Republicans, yes. Pete, he voted with the Republicans on this one as well. So my question is, Pete, you've already laid down on the environment for labor. You've laid down on the environment for construction. Are you going to do it for transportation? Why wouldn't you? They're your number one donor base. Delta Airlines, Berkshire Hathaway, Airline Pilots Association, and just it goes airline, airline, airline. It's, it's all airlines after that. Um, 
Here's the question we all need to ask Pete publicly. And I'm asking you, Pete DeFazio, as somebody who thinks you're a representative who can be worked with, again, voted for you, will you give us a public yes on green transportation industry by 2030? Because you'll be the chair. And if anybody is set to lead the transportation industry in a green new deal, it would be you. So let's hear you publicly state that. That's what I want out of Pete DeFazio. Little background there.